Hi everyone, uh, just doing a, a video this week on a few easy or relatively easy improvements you can make to some of your steam locomotives and your rolling stock. So I thought I'd, I'd make this just because there's a few easy tweaks that you can make to some of these steam locomotives that improve the look and the realism quite a bit. So without uh, any preamble I'll just crack on and I'll um, I'll run through them all. Some of them are free and you can just do without virtually anything. Um, a few of them there's various products you can uh, get to to improve the look. Right the first thing very very easy is lamps. So some people are very picky about these. I never used to be that fussed, but since I bought a pack and started using them, I, I do really try and make sure I've got the right ones on the front of the locomotives. So I'm sure most people are probably aware of this, but in case you're not, depending on where these headlamps were positioned on the front of the, or the rear of the locomotive, would determine what type of train it was. So if a signalman was looking out of his um, signal box and could see the train approaching him, he could quickly check the positions of the two lamps on the front in the day or they'd be lit obviously at night um, and they and he would be able to tell whether it's a an unfitting goods train or a local passenger chain train or an express passenger train or um, a mineral train and get an idea about what was going on effectively I think on the southern region region they tended to use discs and those would determine the route of the train rather than what the train was so that's the the exception i guess so for all of mine i bought these model u lamps and they're very very small this is a gwr one they do lner style they do lms style they do all sorts of things so that's a uh, great western one that's is an LMS lamp and then I've got an LNER lamp there on the front of the V2. So the cool thing about these is, difficult to mess around with these and film at the same time, they have a little slot under the bottom so you can just, if I spin this one round, there we go, they basically just slot on top of your lamp, lamp brackets. Um, they come unpainted, you just need to paint them white while they're on the sprue, cut them off, and then this is quite fiddly, but you have to stick, if I can pick this up, you have to stick that lens onto the front, it kind of comes on like sticky backed paper. The first easy improvement you can make to your models, I definitely recommend getting yourselves a couple of packs of the, uh, the Model U lamps. I'm not affiliated with them or anything, I just really like them. Um, you might think, well, it's a lot of money just to be spending on tiny plastic lamps, but once you bought a couple of packs, you're good to go. I mean, you only really need to buy maybe one or two packs, and then you can just change the lamps onto whatever engine you're running at that time. So there you go. First tip, Model U lamps. They're very good, especially if you're filming your layout like close up like mine. They make a big, they make a nice difference. Um, so yeah, definitely recommend those. One more thing on the lamps is that Model U also do these brake lamps that go on the rear of your brakes. So what I've done is I've just glued a lamp onto the brake coach at the end of each rake of coaches. So I've shown this before, but I have a, a KD coupling on, on the end of each brake coach. And then I use the West Hill Wagon Works magnetic couplers which means I can kind of, I can use Hornby, Backman or whatever coaches interchangeably, even if the coupling heights are different. So I've, I've already done a video on that. I'd, I'd put those in, in the middle of all my rakes. KD on the end and then stick a Model U lamp on the end as well. Next easy improvement is crew. So again, Model U do some amazing 3D printed figures that you can paint up yourself. I'm not really that great at figure painting, so I tend to just buy the packs of the Backman figures. So I think you get two, four, I think you get six in a pack. So I think a pack is about eight or nine pounds. So over the years, I've just bought a pack every time I've got a couple more locos to fill. So this is what they look like. You get them in different positions. 
they come pre-painted so you can literally just put them in. I tend to just give mine a wash with like a black um, acrylic paint mixed with a bit of water just to tone them down because they're a bit shiny when they come straight out the uh, out the thing. So you can see the fireman's overalls are a bit a bit grubby now. Uh, I mean, look, the, the Model U ones are going to be way more detailed and really nice if you can paint them up properly. But when you've got this locomotive running on the track you can't really see them that well anyway so I've just I'm just happy to go with these ones but I would be keen to try the Model E ones um I mean look that like a locomotive like this like a Manor has the open cab so you can clearly see the uh the crew in there things like the V2 I have got a crew in there but you can you can you can, can't really see them that well I've got the this chap leaning out the the cab on the standard four you know, like on this Stanier Mogul, I tend to keep keep the window slot free. Like I've got one guy in there. And then in the backman pack, you get this chap who's just leaning out the window. So you can just pop him in there and um, you can have him leaning out. So if you don't glue him in, you can just switch him into whatever locomotive you're running, which is quite cool. So um, yeah, definitely recommend these, these Batman figures or the Model E ones if you want to spend a bit more and really, really up your game. Second thing is the smoke box door darts. Now... Um, you know, some people might not agree with this, but I think some of the smoke box door darts you get, how the locos come, they may be, even though they probably are to scale, they just look a bit small to me. They don't really give the locomotive that much presence. I prefer them a bit chunky. So you can buy brass versions of it, which are slightly larger. And I'll show you how I fit these to mine, but I think they really improve the look of the front end quite a lot. I'm basically just going to pop this bit straight into the front of the low coat and try and get that straight. And I think it's easier to put this bit in first and then put the two uh, darts on rather than trying to put the darts on whilst just holding this with your fingers. Because I'm sure you'll end up dropping it like I have before and losing these tiny little bits. Right, so that's pretty much straight we'll just let that dry if it's not straight once it's fully dried you can you could bend this ever so slightly if you're careful but that will do for now right hopefully this is in shot so I'm just going to put a bit of super glue on the end of this only a tiny bit and then the next job is to thread the actual door darts themselves onto this nose bit. So you see these have got a tiny hole in them. So it's just a, ma a matter of light. Right, there we go. It took a bit of pressure to move it down the spindle, but we did get there in the end. It's worth noting that these uh, come longer than they need to be. And depending on how short you want them, you can trim them at the end. I think it's easier to get them on when you've got a bit more leverage and then trim them after, to be honest. So I'm just going to put the second one on now. The first one that goes on usually points down. The second one, you can point however you want it. So the glue's dried a bit there and the kind of... So I'm just going to scrape a bit of that super glue off. It might actually be easier putting these on and then just putting a dob of super glue on top so i might try that on the next one yeah that went on way easier actually right there we go so obviously these this is too long at the minute but i'm just gonna I'll trim this in a second right so i'm just going to trim these slightly. i'm just going to use the old zuron track clippers to just carefully Trim a tiny bit off the end and then just work my way down until I've got them to the right length. I've just done that bottom one. I've just got it kind of in line with the smoke, the um, shed code plate there. All right, that's done maybe slightly longer still than they would have been on the prototype. But I just, I like the way it looks when they're a little bit more visible. So I'm just going to keep them, I'm going to keep them exactly like that, I think. 
So I'm just going to put a little tiny bit of glue on there, but it's quite, quite nice to have them where you can still adjust the uh, adjust it so you can kind of change the position, uh, which is quite cool. So, and then it's just a matter of painting them black. So we'll get to that in a sec. So I wasn't expecting the smoke box door to suddenly fly off on this one, but it's probably made this quite a bit easier, to be honest. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of super glue on the handles. To the side and a bit up like that. There we go. So again, I just need to trim these slightly. But that was a whole lot easier, the fact that I could take the smoke box door off. And then I'm just going to glue this, and maybe even just press it back in. Right, so here are the three that I've done so far. I've done the Stanier Mogul, I've done the 9F, and I've done the Standard Class 4. And all the door darts are in the same position at the minute, but you can just, you can just adjust. Can adjust them that one's actually still dry and so i probably shouldn't touch that but once they're dry um you can kind of loosen that first dart and position it how you want but i'm just keeping them in the same position for now Wow, that went through very easily on the manor. Barely twisted it and it just went straight through. That's good. I don't, I'm not going to show you me doing all of these because I've got like 10 locomotives to do. Uh, but I just do a, a few before and afters just to show you the improvements that it's made. So I'll crack on with these and then I will be back when I've done all the rest of them. Right, there we go. All the smoke box door darts are now fitted. And I just need to paint these. I've fitted nine and I'm going to save the, the last one for my new black five when that arrives in May. So I'm just going to use a bit of black Humbrol paint for this. Nothing fancy. This paint is quite watery, so it might take two coats, depending on what you're using. So I'm just going to work my way through the rest of these now. Right, so I've just painted these, ended up doing them grey actually, rather than black, but this is the finished article for most of them. So I think they just look miles better than they did before. You just give each one a bit more character. So the next easy improvement you can make to your locomotives, and this one's pretty straightforward. All you need is one of these, which is a little tool sold by Hornby with a hexagonal thing at each end. And you can just use this to remove the screws on the wheels. So you can buy these off Hornby's website or most uh, model shops will sell them for a few pounds. So I don't know why manufacturers are still doing this. They, some of them have fixed it but you still see the odd model come out where it's wrong but they're still getting the valve gear completely wrong on most engines even though it's super easy to get right so this is how it should look in motion with the the crank following the connecting rod and then this shows where it's gone a bit wrong on this model and it's been the, the crank's been fitted the wrong way 
all you need to do is get this, especially on a Hornby locomotive, it's slightly more difficult on a Backman one. All you need to do is loosen this a little bit and that will mean you can shift this. So rather than it, as the wheel turns forward, as in going that way, rather than this being this crank leading, it needs to follow. So it needs to just be moved to that side like that. So it needs to be at 90 degrees to the connecting rod. And then just hold that in place like that. Tighten the screw back up. Oops. There you go. So now it's right. So as the wheel goes forward, so that way, I'll show you on the track in a sec. The, um, this uh, crank here will follow the connecting rod, so easy as that. Yeah. The exception to this is locomotives like the bullet, the rebuilt Bullet Pacifics. They are outside admission, so they'd so that that other way would be right. So it's worth just checking how yours is set up. May, sometimes they come correct, sometimes they don't. When I got this back one locomotive, it, it was the same. It was set up like. This with that connecting rod leading, which is not right for Stania locomotives. Um, so all you need to do is use a very, very small flathead screwdriver for this one. And push that down like that. So now it's following maybe a little bit more. You just have to be a little bit careful with them. And then I'll just need to use a very, very small flathead screwdriver just to secure that in place sometimes it's tricky with the Batman locomotives you just kind of have to see what you can get away with I think right so that's about it so in summary model E lamps on the front smoke box door dart replacement the weathering and the the real coal in the tender is a given uh, and then make sure You've got that valve gear sorted out, so this was another one that was wrong on and I've adjusted it. So yeah, ho hopefully that's um, all pretty self-explanatory. There's a few easy ways that you can um, enhance your steam locomotives a little bit. Um, I hope that was useful and thanks for watching.